Good day, dear students. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, the session is going to be a bit different for the IUL students to show that IUL is not only serious about their students obtaining their qualification, but really helping the students further to find employment in Namibia. My name is Sven Schulz. I'm a professional CV and interview coach, and I'm going to take you through a proper CV preparation today what a CV should and should not look like, how employers view a CV, and what a CV tells the employer about yourself. CV preparation. Tips and tricks of a good CV. Sven Schulz, I'm the professional CV and interview coach in Namibia for Namibia. So, my dear students, now you've got your qualification. What is next? Number one, people must know that you are in the job market. Number two, people want to know who you are. And number three, employers will decide if they are going to shortlist you or not. Why do we need a CV in the first place? A CV is a business card for your qualifications and experience. It is basically a document that summarizes who you are and what you have done in a professional context. A CV is a reflection of who you are and what pride you take in your work. And last but not least, it is an indication that you are available for vacancies in the Namibian market. So let's start at the beginning. What is a CV? If you take the Tesaurus and uh, look at the definition of a CV, this word is frequently seen in conjunction with vita, a curriculum vita, Latin for course of one's life, is a short account of one's career and qualifications, prepared typically by the applicant for a position. In other words, a resume. Curriculum vita is abbreviated CV, and is pluralized as curriculum vitae. The key word here is short. It is a short summary of one's life and professional career. I want to share with you a few facts about uh, CV reading, how employers read CV, and how employers shortlist potential candidates for their companies and for their available positions. First and foremost, always remember, a CV does not secure your job, but a CV lands you on a shortlist. This is exactly where you want to be, on a shortlist. Once you are on a shortlist, you can start to sell your character, your skills and your knowledge to the potential employer. So don't expect if you have a winning CV that you will immediately get a job, but you will immediately get on a shortlist. This is where you want to be. Namibian employers get hundreds of applications for each advertised position in the newspaper, on the internet, uh, with recruitment agencies. They literally get hundreds of applications. We are in tough economic times in Namibia, so many people apply for positions to either change their current position or to find employment. So you have some tough competition. When it comes to your CV, you are one of hundreds of applicants to be shortlisted. The person doing the shortlisting will spend about 10 to 15 seconds to decide if your CV will be shortlisted. So recruiters don't have as much time to read through long CVs. They literally decide in 10 or 15 seconds if your CV will be shortlisted uh, for the available position. If your CV does not fit professional standards, it will not be shortlisted. Even if you have all qualifications and experience, it is very important that your CV stands out from the rest, that it summarizes your knowledge, your qualifications, and that your CV is being noticed amongst all these applications. So, how do we do that? What makes a bad and a good CV. 
I'm aware that uh, some of the viewers can't see it that nicely, but if you look at it from the left-hand side, it's uh, not very organized, and on the right-hand side, it's much more clear, much more organized. So let's start with the CV pages. Number one, modern CVs do not have cover pages. You see this time and again that uh, people do a CV and they want to do a cover page for the CV uh, with one or other picture either of themselves or an icon on the cover page. Modern CV formats don't have cover pages. Why? Number one, for the recruiter reading the document, it's very obvious that this document is a CV. Number two, it takes away the attention of a good document. If your cover for page is not according to professional standards or you don't take special care with your cover page, it really takes away the attention of a good document. So we have a bad example and we have a good example. A bad example on the left hand side, dear uh, IOL students, is a CV with many, many pages, uh, not very summarized. The recruiter has to search through the CV what you have been doing, what your qualifications are. What a CV should look like is on the right-hand side, short and sweet. That brings me to the main point. A CV must be short and to the point. We don't want to read long stories. We want to know if you have the qualifications, yes. Do you have the experience, yes. You are being shortlisted. Again, recruiters don't have much time to read long CVs. Personal information on a modern CV format is not necessary as it takes away the attention of what the CV should be about. Number one, your experience. Number two, your qualifications. So let's go through some of the common mistakes uh, on especially Namibian CVs, uh, what we've seen uh, throughout the years, throughout many, many CVs, is personal information versus what the employer thinks when he reads this personal information. Many people like to put on there they are single or they are married. What the employer thinks is, I don't want to date you, but I want to employ you. So there's no need to know for me if you are single or married. If I want to know that, I will ask you in the shortlist interview. Many people put their ID number on there. This is also not necessary, as I, as recruiter, don't want to give you a loan. Some CVs carry the religion or the denomination uh, uh, on there, what church you go to, what the employer thinks is, I don't want to go through service with you, I want to employ you. Street address, another common mistake. The recruiter does not want to visit you, but he wants to shortlist and wants to employ you. Many people put PO Box on there. PO Box actually these days is outdated, as many modern companies work with email, work with Facebook, work with YouTube, LinkedIn. So PO Box is really irrelevant on the modern CV format in Namibia. As recruiters, don't write letters to you to mail to you. Many people like to put their health status on there to say my health is excellent. Uh, dear students, this is irrelevant as that can change within one day and you can be a sick person. So all this personal information really takes away the attention what a CV should be about and what you are trying to achieve with your CV. Very, very important. Please do not put your salary expectation or your preferred benefits, which you would like to have uh, at a new employment or at a place of employment on your CV. Many people are brutally honest to say they currently earn, for instance, 15,000 Namibian dollars a month. They get a bonus paycheck. They have a company car and they have medical aid and that the person, he or she, only works from Mondays to Fridays. 
So although honesty is very good in a CV, what these expectations show a potential employer is, the person does not even work for me and is already demanding benefits and a certain pay. Leave this for the shortlisting, leave this for the negotiation part. Quite frankly, this information does not belong on a CV. Again, it takes away the information on what a CV should be about. A common mistake on Namibian CVs is that people love to put their picture on a CV. It uh, makes them look good, they like the picture they put on. People can be a strange breed. Please don't put your picture on a CV. As the person going through the CVs and reading the CVs is only human. If the person does not like your face, or the person thinks that this person does not look honest enough to work for the company. You can have all the qualifications and experience in the world. You will not be shortlisted because of a human factor. So please don't put your picture on a CV. Rather put your qualifications and your experience on them. You again might think that your picture looks good. And tell me, dear students, would you really employ this person on the left-hand side if the CV were in front on your table? I don't think so. Also, as recruiters read, don't read long CVs. Keep your job descriptions short, sweet and to the point. Common phrasing on Namibian CVs say, I worked in a showroom. This is a, sorry, this is an example of a salesperson in a showroom in one of the Namibian companies. said, I worked in a showroom and had to help clients every day. I was responsible for pricing and also did the daily debt banking for the company. As recruiters don't read long sentences, keep your job descriptions short and to the point. In this case, we would say showroom management, Client interaction, banking duties. That tells the potential recruiter in three keywords what you did and if you are right for the position which they advertised and uh, for the candidate they have in mind. Remember, a CV is a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of who you are in your work. It's a reflection of who you are in your personal life. So. Do some effort, keep your CV neat, that the employer has a neat and proper document in front of him. Again, the pictures are uh, very small uh, for some of the viewership, but a CV with a lot of pen writing, a CV where a cell phone number is scratched out and a new cell phone number is written in. This is not somebody that recruiters want to employ. This shows sloppiness. This uh, shows that you don't take pride in a simple document to market yourself to the Namibian recruiter and certainly you will not land on a short list with a sloppy CV. Rather take some time, do a professional CV, get a professional template, go to a professional CV writer that your CV can be done properly if you don't have the talents to do it yourself. Please make sure that your CV contact details are up to date. It seems, seems like such a simple thing, but people don't keep their contact details up to date. They forget that they have an old email address. They forget that their cell phone numbers changed in the meantime and they actually have an outdated CV. Or worse, they don't read through their own CV and they put a wrong number on there. So please tell me, which call would you rather have from a recruiter? As you can see, again, on the left-hand side, um, the person did not take care to put a proper cell phone number in and actually put a 7 in place of a 1. What the potential recruiter will hear when he wants to contact you, the number you have dialed does not exist. And he will simply put it down and go to the next shortlisting candidate, thus jumping your chance of getting employment. Take care. 
put proper contact details on there and the call you will receive is good day. We would like you to come for an interview. A CV must be interesting to see and interesting to read. It must not look like a collection of Namibian tax laws, which, uh, trust you me, is a very, very boring read. So again, a document must be interesting to the eye. It must be a good read. Don't be afraid to use color, although not too much. They say um, it's like a woman's makeup. Always subtle hints, and the same goes for your CV. So tell me, dear viewership, which book would you rather buy? The book on your left-hand side or the book on your right-hand side, which is a bit more colorful, which has um, interesting reads in it. I think the obvious answer here is the right-hand side book. Remember, a CV is the same as a good book. It must be interesting to read, interesting to the eye, and good reading material for the person reading it. That concludes our session for today. For more information and professional CV writing, please contact me on the cell phone number 81 564-9817 or send me an email at sven s-v-e-n at getnoticed.com.na We all would like to get noticed in the job market so sven at getnoticed.com.na Alternatively, please visit our website at www.getnoticed.com.na Before I say goodbye, Invest some effort in your CV. It is after all who you are and what you can do in your professional career. So don't be sloppy about it. Invest some time, invest some effort and be proud of the document that you present to a potential employer. In our next session, so your CV is perfect. You have followed my advice and you are going for an interview. You got shortlisted, which can be a nerve wracking experience what to do now. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day and see you next time.